Hi there everyone and welcome back to another a very exciting chess game this time by Aaron Nimzovich one of the best chess players around 1920s against his opponent Gregory Flas an unknown Hungarian chess player and this was a correspondence chess game from 1912 and this is a must see game uh, so let's see what happened we have a uh, basically four knights game the Italian variation Bishop to c5, and the game is transposing to the Gieco Piano Canal variation. Bishop to g5 is the Canal variation. h6, Bishop to h4, and then g5. Bishop to g3, Bishop to g4, and pinning the knight, and maybe knight is coming, and it is going to be very dangerous. So knight is pinned, and it looks like this is a difficult position already. But Nimzovich played the most logical move, h4, and he's threatening to capture the pawn, and the h-pawn is going to be pinned. So knight to h5, uh, capturing the pawn, and we have knight to d4, and it looks like white is in trouble, so attacking this knight twice. Uh, it looks like this is a difficult position, and the knight is pinned, but it is white to move, and white has a very strong move in this position which is tricky, can you guess the next move of Aaron Nimzovich? What would you do in this position? A tricky move, but can you find that move? Even I would not be able to find that move, so uh, <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, but I would not be able to find the move, maybe, uh, if you had the white pieces. Can you guess that move? Okay, so this is what Nimzovich played. Bishop takes on e5. And can you see the purpose of this move? So black realized the danger. Uh, this was a correspondence chess game anyway. So we have bishop takes on f3 uh, in between move. If capturing the bishop, this was the idea of Nimzovich. Did you see the idea? Lightning strike, bishop takes on f7. And if not capturing the bishop, it is very simple. Bishop takes on h5 and white is easily winning. White is three pawns up, also attacking the bishop. So, uh, after bishop takes, uh, we have bishop takes on f3, but of course, uh, we will check out what happens if king takes on f7, then knight takes on e5, this was the whole idea, forking the king and the bishop, and then capturing the bishop, and this is an unstoppable attack, both attacking the knight, threatening to capture the pawn, capturing this pawn is irrelevant, it is not going to do any harm to white, so black is in trouble in this position. So this is why Nimzovich sacrificed his bishop, and we have bishop takes on f3, and this opens, uh, basically the rook is open, attacking the knight, capturing the bishop, but at the end of the day, Nimzovich captures the knight, and black end up having two pieces, being two pieces down. So unpinning the pawn, rook to g8, and if capturing the pawn with the pawn, blunder, rook to g1, uh, winning the queen. So we have f4, and the most natural and the best move in this position. So liberating the queen and also supporting the pawn. So we have e takes on f4 and then queen to g4 by Aaron Nimzovich leaving on c2. So knight takes on c2, king to d2, knight takes on a1, Nimzovich played the move and black resigned. Bishop takes lightning strike and black resigned on the spot at move 17. Uh, because of this possible continuation, if not capturing the bishop, capturing the rook, and if capturing the bishop, we have this unstoppable attack, check, forking king and the rook. So if defending, pushing the pawn, and how do you defend? If with the rook, then rook uh, to f5. And if defending with the queen, then we have rook to f5, uh, only sensible move, and then capturing the rook, capturing the rook, and this is all over. What an amazing, beautiful chess miniature by Aaron Nimzovich. And thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Stay safe, take care and bye bye.